guys. So in this episode, we're gonna do a rewire of the whole boat. Now, when I bought it, allegedly it had a professional rewire done not that long before. It was pretty bad, I thought. Um, all the wiring though is new. So I'm gonna salvage all the wiring that runs from the actual accessories like lights and um, oh, anchor lights and trim tabs and whatever, all the way up to the front. Which next leads me to the absolute mess of wires that's behind the dash. So that big mess, that was probably one of the first things that I stripped out of this boat from the very start, almost a year ago now. That's all gone. So we're now gonna look at doing a full rewire. Okay, so everything for my rewire has arrived. There's a website I've always used for like auto, auto marine electrical stuff that's called red to go It's in Western Australia, but you put in an order and it turns up in like three days. It's the cheapest and they've got a huge variety of stuff. They can also get you a lot of stuff like these that you can't buy at your super cheap autos and whatnot. Uh, so we've got all this to do it with. We've got some glue tea shrink. We've got the wire to do it. So it's marine, so we're using tinned wire from the 15 and 10 amp, 15 amp and seven and a half amp. Then we've got the some dual, dual stuff as well. Um, we've got these adhesive cable mounts. We've got some general fuses. Some high bond tape they're good to put on the back of them and um, we've got a few sizes of conduit as well so on top of that i've got my normal kind of wiring 12 volt box so that's for the terminals you can use you can buy these at super cheap order or wherever i think they're terrible um, for marine you can pretty much get the same ones but that's replaced with some heat shrink i still think they're rubbish the reason being is that when you squash them with pliers or a crimping tool all it does is squash a little cylinder in there flat. Bit of corrosion, you pull out one fibre, you've got a loose connection. I've never had any luck with them. <clears throat> these, these are the best. Uh, Narva make these. They're called Narva non-insulated crimps, uh, no, Narva non-insulated terminals. You do need a special pair of crimps for them. These are made by Narva as well, they're meant for them. But together they work really well and they just never fail. And the reason these are so good is because they've got two hold points not one, one that holds the insulation, one that actually holds the wiring. So that's the insulation one. And that's the actual connection one. Then you flip them over and do them once more. In the same terminal you did do it one way and then flip them over and do the other and there it is crimped on the insulation and crimped actually using the connection the crimp on the insulation that will never pull off uh, for marine you will have to put a bit of heat shrink over these to stop any corrosion getting into the wires so the heat shrink I've got for this it's from the red to go website but it's made by a company called Radiform. It's so much better than the stuff you get from like super cheap or autobahn. The size it contracts is a lot bigger as well. It's just on that little screw there. That's six mil down to sort of two. Um, it's also got a glue within it as well. So there's a much more waterproof kind of seal. Okay, so the next thing in our sights is the outboard wiring harness. So it took a little while for this one to arrive, but we finally have the set of gauges I've really wanted for this. Uh, they're a Faria bead set of gauges, and uh, they've got the systems check. The Taco has the systems check plug, so it will uh, it'll function with this motor as it should. Okay, so I've got the gauges in now, and I've got the wiring harness hooked up. Now the problem that's always been with this wiring harness is it's about two and a half meters too long. Given it is just wires, I'm going to shorten the whole harness about seven feet. So I measured it and checked it about six times, but I'm happy with this length that I'm shortening it by. So I'm gonna fasten these two points to this piece of wood and do all my joins when they're relative. So uh, we've put a, a connector on every single one of them. Uh, we've cut heat shrink to size. 
So here we are, all heat shrunk together. Power wires have a have a red heat shrink. So all together. Now I've just kind of mock hooked it up to everything and into the back of the taco. So before I heat shrink it and lock it all the way, just make sure I've got everything working. Yep, I don't have a buzzer hooked up, so there's no beep. So pretty straightforward with um, these gauges wiring. It's just the one big plug on the back of the taco and um, a ground and a positive to all the other sensors. The only other sensor that gets an external wire is the fuel gauge and that gets one from the ground to the gauge and then the actual input wire which is up the top so all up i've got nine nine accessories i need to run odds are i'll add another couple over the years so i've gone for 12 switches and fuses all up one of these was already in there i'll just track down another one exactly the same so it matched now there isn't much room under the dash so I've used this technique in the past, which is to actually mount the switches on the inside of the cabin, inside a junction box, and to put the fuse box on top of it, just so you're not taking up such a big area with electronics. So I just cut out the dashboard to double the size of the gap that was there before, which is to accommodate those two sets of six switches. So I'll just cut out the back of this acrylic junction box uh, to suit where the switches are going to go through the dash. So there's the two switchboards fitted on the front. So it should encapsulate the switches there. And unless you do a good job of keeping them out of the elements, and then the backing will go on it, which will be where the fuse box sits. So you're kind of doubling your use of space. So before I bought it, this boat had a professional rewire. So the wiring at the back and all down the sides and basically from the accessories forwards was actually pretty good, I thought. I've cleaned it up a bit, I've zip tied it, but it's all kind of together. It's all with the engine harness now. It's got a proper isolator, so I'm actually not going to touch that. If you were doing an, a complete rewire, you'd be starting with this step putting the accessories in and then running all the wires forwards to the dash, not trying to do it the other way. Um, so none of that I'm actually gonna mess with. All I'm doing is gonna be rewiring up the front here. So all we have to deal with is this one big piece of conduit with all our accessory wires within it and um, a few of these NMEA cables from the transducer and uh, the fuel rate monitor and that sort of thing. So in most cases, uh, to reach the new, the new switches, these have all had to be extended, and I've used those proper crimps covered in heat shrink. Uh, the crimps, they aren't big enough for the actual supply wires, so they're getting a proper splice and solder. And these never adhere very well unless you clean the surface first, and sometimes still they don't, don't adhere that well. So because that's got so much weight, we've even put a little tech screw through the back of that one. Okay, so I've got that all secured now. Um, I've isolated the actual true power supplies to the battery in a bit more conduit. They run out here, all these are live all the time. And then we've got all these, we're ready to trim these and separate them into to make and pause. So they're all separated now. Now you only do this if you're as OCD as me which has put a bit of heat shrink on there, so it looks like they all start at the same spot. Okay, there's our very aesthetic heat shrink on, separated into sort of two streams, then we're gonna start threading it onto the box. All right, so I got the reds threaded through, the hole that they come through, and I've just started to trim them um, accordingly to go onto the back of the switches. Okay, so we can say we've got all our wires complete. <clears throat> both from both sides now it's all pinned up it's all in conduit all our accessories hooked up all the positives have been hooked up onto terminals so there's all our positive leads on inside the junction box everything's fed outside so now we're going to seal it up hopefully for the last time now we're going to look at putting on the fuse box 
All right, so I've just started the long job of putting on all our negative terminals. Okay, we're just about all our grounds on. We're now going to start doing all the positive wires. So in the last boat build I did, I used these ones. They were rubbish. They pulled out so many times. So I'm using these proper crimp ones for the actual large negative and positive power supplies. There we have it. All held away. Main positive and negative on, all positives, all negatives, all hitched up. And doesn't it look fresh? Well, there she is. That's the fuse box and all the wiring done in behind there. All tucked away, all zip tied up. Pop this off, all fused up for the relevant fuses. We ended up with one spare, which is nice. Main wires, everything together. The gauges all finished up, all working the way they should, and I've just tidied up the NMEA, that's for the UHF, tied up the NMEA 2000 wiring a bit, so I've got a nice clean uh, junction there.